What's up YouTube, today we dive into the world of trackers, most specifically Renoise, which I think is probably one of the most slept on DAWs on the market. For various reasons, there's a pretty steep learning curve, or at least, you know, it departs very much from the traditional DAW, but I think it offers some really nice workflow techniques that can really speed up your idea creation process. And I think specifically for the type of genres that I'm into, I'm actually surprised that it's taken me so long to get into Renoise. So today I want to discuss a couple of things about, you know, what a tracker is. So today's video, I guess, is going to kind of be a exploration of Renoise, but I also want to discuss, I think, what makes a tracker special and a couple of the basics. So if you're stepping into Renoise or any type of tracker for the first time, hopefully this video will help you make the first steps a little bit easier. Anyway, without blabbering too much, let's dive in and have a look. Put in random numbers by just mashing the keys. Mm, sounds good. So the term tracker is actually derived from the original software for the Commodore Amiga. The software was called Sound Tracker, and at the time it was pretty much the pinnacle of music production software. However, that being said, it was very, very basic. You can almost think of it as an entire DAW based around very primitive step sequencing style MIDI that we see on stuff like the 303s, the 101s, you know, those very primitive step sequences. Imagine a whole DAW built around that type of very, very step based granular, I, I say granular, not in the terms of granular audio processing, but in the terms of having control over each step in the process. That's kind of what a tracker is. So of course, over the years, technology has developed to a point where the music software that we have is very advanced. You know, we can do stuff like notation and stuff that wasn't really uh, possible with just text-based input. That being said, is it also helped to change the sound of electronic music. There are various genres that are defined by the sound of trackers. If we think about chiptune and various other styles of music, specifically in the demo scene, I'm not going to get too much into that, but those who know, know. There's a particular style of music, like acid and psytrance, even the early days were written on trackers. That's just so easy to achieve in this style of workflow. So like I said, it's not a fully fledged complete DAW, but you can actually make some really advanced tracks using just Renoise alone. I would probably suggest they do have like a plugin version. I'd probably suggest looking into the plugin and loading that into the DAW that you use. But again, this video is just a exploration into the world of trackers and I'm using Renoise as the tool to show you guys the beauty of the tracker interface. Okay, so like I said, the tracker is a text-based musical interface. The timeline moves downwards from top to bottom rather than in our traditional DAWs, which we know of, which go from left to right. So at first, this might be a little bit confusing for some, but it really isn't that confusing. In fact, I find that this type of interface is actually very intuitive because, you know, you can, for example, punch in a note and then it steps down in the sequence, then you punch in another note and it steps down again. You can also choose how many steps it moves, it progresses when you punch in a note. So let's say, for example, hit the record button and we just punch in a couple of notes here on uh, the MIDI keyboard. You can actually use your computer keyboard as well, but I've set it up for my mu musical, for my MIDI keyboard just because I, uh, I find the notes easier to punch in this way. So let's punch in a quick arp like pattern. And you see, we punch in a note and it moves one along punch in another note and it moves one along. And so you can get these really quick, you can get these very quick sequences jotted down and get ideas out very quickly, specifically for these kind of step-based uh, synths. Another cool thing is like, say for example, you've realized, okay, I don't actually want this note. You can just swap uh, the note depending, or you can do chords and it kind of layers them up on top of each other and stuff like that. I kind of want to keep things simple, just monophonic. So let's just remove some of these notes. We've actually got enough steps here in the sequence. As you can see, we've got a 64 step sequence that's determined at the top left of each of the patterns. We can actually reduce this down to 32 and you'll see here it's actually 31, but that's because step one is actually zero. So another thing to wrap your head around, the number system in trackers is generally not decimal. It uses hexadecimal, which is a bit, and again, a little bit confusing, but it's actually, there's, there's pretty cool reason why I think 
that a hexadecimal system actually works better for music. And that's because it counts in values of 16. And, you know, most bars are 16 steps, you know, four by four, 16, uh, for this type of music. Again, if you're doing more composition stuff, maybe this doesn't work for you. But for me, I really enjoy this type of thing. So anyway, let's punch in a couple more random notes here. And we've created a sequence. Now, if we play, there's no actual sound coming through because we haven't actually loaded any samples or any plugins or anything like that. So traditionally, trackers are designed for use with samples or single cycle waveforms and that kind of thing. But one of the cool things about Renoise is we can actually load plugins and use the beauty of advanced modern plugins alongside the beauty and quick workflow of the old school tracker system. But for the beginning part of this tutorial, I'm kind of just going to stick with the built in sounds. And so here, for example, we can click basic and we have just a basic sawtooth single cycle waveform, which we can load up over here into one of our sample slots. So now one thing is that when we are punching in the data, like the actual musical data for each step, we're going to want to choose which sound is being triggered by that step. And that's another really cool thing, but also a little bit confusing thing about trackers is that each of the channels can hold multiple slots of trigger data. So you can have w one channel that's triggering 100 different drum sounds and just vary the different parameters in each of those sounds. So with each of the musical steps in a tracker, you've got the musical data, then you've got the velocity data. Uh, some trackers don't have the velocity data set, uh, built in and you actually have to put it in with a parameter. But then you also have commands or parameters. And these are things like slides, up, down, uh, arpeggiators, you can do re-triggers and you can also do decay cuts. So for example, if we press C01, what's gonna happen is it's gonna play the C3 note and then the C is basically the command for a decay cut. And so it'll play the C3 note and then after one tick, which is the value which we punched in here, it will cut the note. And so you'll notice now it's doing these like really low frequency clicks and that's because it's a single cycle waveform. So we're gonna actually have to jump into the sampler section here and we can pitch it up a couple of octaves just to, so that we can kind of hear a bit better what we're doing here. Okay, let's listen to what we've done. Okay, let's turn the volume down on the mixer a little bit here. So you've actually got a mixer and each of the channels are represented here with the volume control. So do you see what I'm saying about that cut where it's just playing the first decay of the sound? So let's say increase this value to, uh, so how hexadecimal works is it counts from zero to nine and then 10 is actually represented by zero by zero a right and 11 would then be zero b 12 would be zero c and like i said it's confusing at first but now when we think of it if we want exactly 16 ticks which would be a perfect divisible we would just press we would just punch in two so it would be like instead of having to work out like 16 or 32s we just work out the divisor of the clock. Does that make sense? Rather than, yeah, I don't know, like, am I being nerdy or am I being crazy here? Anyway, and so here what we can do is we can actually punch in the uh, values of the volumes uh, manually. And this is another cool thing about the tracker interface is it steps downwards if you're not holding the shift parameter. Say for example, we wanna punch in a command here. Like let's do an arpeggiator on this step. We wanna hold shift and then let's say for example, 25 okay that was 15 25 semitones in the arpeggiator so if we don't hold shift we're going to press a value and it steps down but if we hold shift it allows us to actually type it in the full command does that make sense so there's a couple of other commands uh, which i'm going to talk about so there's up 12 which is 12 is the amount of semitones uh, so actually it would be 0b and then we've got a down as well, which is the same. We can say down to B. And then we've also got a glide command, which is G. And let's say zero. So glide glides to the note, which is, so the G is gliding to this specific note. And then the down and ups are from that note 
to the note which you specify with the value. Does that make sense? So you can also punch in multiple commands for each step. So say for example here, we want uh, to slide up, but we also wanna cut it after three. Okay, so what we can also do is we can use uh, an, another very cool command is retriggers. So let's actually put in, let's say for example, retrigger. So how it works is the value is backwards and that changes the speed. So you're punching in the amount of ticks that each retrigger has in it. So for example, uh, some a value of eight will be like audible glitching, whereas a, valuable, a value of like one or two would be more like a tone. So then with these ones, this is more audible in samples, which we're gonna get to shortly. So let's just say, for example, listen to what this sounds like. So the Renoise manual actually has a pretty handy thing which you can print out, this over here, which is just a list of all the commands and stuff and how to use them. Uh, for example, like vibrato, X, VXY, X being the speed, Y being the depth, for example, and all sorts of things like that. So you can fade in notes, fade out notes, and do all sorts of interesting things like that. So here, let's move some of these notes up in an octave. For example, here, D sharp four, let's move this up to D sharp five. Sometimes the arpeggiated notes, I like to move up. <laughs> So now say for example, we wanna put notes in between. We can set this down to one. And so now that we have the ability to actually step in between these. So like for example here, let's do some like short staccato notes. So let's put in, uh, let's hold shift. Let's put in like a high note. And then here, for example, we can say C04. So here what we wanna do is, uh, we wanna do a couple of these staccato notes. And so say for example here, we can actually copy this entire command and then we can move down and like paste it wherever we want it in the in-between staccato notes. Does that make sense? Now we can go back here and punch in the notes that maybe we want in the higher register. Okay, so it's a bit crazy. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, but kind of you get the idea of how quickly you can sketch out these ideas if you just understand how the tracker interface works. So, like I said, you're not limited to just samples with Renoise. That's something that's particularly special is we can load VSTs. So here we can load something like Snap Heap. Um, I can load one of the custom filters from my latest Catalyst Snap Heap pack and just straight off the bat, transform this basic Sawwave sound into something a little bit more psychedelic. <laughs> Okay, let's talk a little bit about the samples. So like I said, each channel can hold multiple different slots of data. We can trigger multiple different sample locations. So let's say for example, put in a kick. I guess the easiest way to think about this is you put in a kick by either dropping it here and then it automatically drops it in the slot and puts in one step or we could drag it in here into the slot and then just start punching in the data automatically. You can actually record it in in real time. So like, but I find that's never quite as accurate, you know, um, especially with this type of interface, the lack of quantizing, well, it always quantizes, but like sometimes it'll quantize to the next beat and stuff. I find my playing skills aren't quite that fast. So I generally just punch the stuff in when I'm in a tracker interface, you know, let's get, so let's put in a kick. And then let's say, for example, like another one here, another one here, another one here. The real beauty of trackers is sampling and manipulating specifically of like drum samples and drum patterns. So let's say for example here with the snare, let's create a ghost note. So we got the main hit of the snare here, right? Let's create a variation uh, on this hit. So what we wanna do is we wanna make it a slightly lower in volume. 
And then also what we want to do is we want to cut it. So C08. And so it'll be a much more staccato version. Okay, so here, for example, we can then take this whole step, shift, control C, move down one, control V, and then we can change this to like a different velocity and maybe a different cut value. So let's say, for example, four. So then that's how you can create these kind of ghost notes. And then here, for example, let's add an, uh, another effects command. And then here we can say retrigger four. Okay, so here you'll see big mistake. You'll notice that this retrigger is now grayed out, and that's because we've put the command on the first slot. It's a bit weird like this, where you have to actually put it on the second one, so R04, and that's because some commands are actually two letters. Okay, so it's cutting. We want to actually hear, let's say for example, we want to actually hear that value. Okay, so then here we can copy, paste, Copy this again for ghost notes. Okay, so the trick is to get these velocities perfect. So let's actually just uh, tweak these a little bit. 15, 05, 15. There we go. 15, 05, 15, 05. Okay, so this is really cool for like glitchy percussion type stuff. So let's say for example, load a bunch of hi-hats in here. And then what we wanna do is we wanna set all of them to cut. So then let's copy this here. And you can actually control P, we'll paste all the way down to the bottom of the line. So if we go control C, control P. Okay, so here with some of these, we want to change them to retrigger and some of them we want to be cuts. So here also we can just go down and put in random numbers by just mashing the keys. Mm, sounds good. Okay, and then some of them what we wanna do is we wanna put in a retrigger and then for example, say 04, go down a bunch and then say like, uh, not F, retrigger 06, retrigger 02. So another really cool thing about trackers and renoise is being able to chop up breaks. Okay, so we have this break that comes with, let's just drag this in, and I actually just wanna remove the first note. So here, what we can do now is jump into the sampler and click waveform. And here, what we can do is we can actually highlight points here and press control K, I think it is. What that does is it drops a, a slice point. And so now what we can do is we can go in and we can just drop in a bunch of slice points, which we can go in and edit later if we want. Uh, let's just put in a few for now. And so now each note in the, in the octave will now trigger a different slice. And we can actually go in and edit each one. Uh, let's just go back to the waveform. And you can zoom in here and just move them closer to the, closer to the transients. Cool, so we've got some slices here. And the retrigger with these breaks, oh, this is, this is, you know this style. This is like the IDM style, uh, Apex Twin, those types, all use this kind of style. Retriggering the breaks with a tracker. Okay, so here, no, we don't want that. We want this note. 
And then, okay, so let's set this to step down twice each time we enter a note. So it'll be like. Okay, let's start refining this idea into something a little bit more musical. So I've removed that silly lead sound that we've created and I've got this slab here that actually comes with the, it actually comes with Renoise. I think it sounds pretty cool. It's that kind of like old school, dancey, garage house kind of sound. So I wanna load this in and we're just gonna add in a couple of notes. So check this out. This is like the workflow I find for adding these kind of stabs, which is really helpful. So what you do is like, you just think where you want the note and you just press stop and it stops the play either like at the position that you want or like one step after. So for example, like I can hear in my head, it's like, it would be cool like to have a stab there. Dun, 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 dun. You guys hear that, that groove? It's like already implied by the lack of the drums in those particular steps. And you can actually see it here. Look at this step. No drum, no drum. So let's put a step here. I think it's actually more like here. Huh? No, we actually want it here, I think. So let's actually just drag it in here into one of the slots and then we can just trigger it with a key. And then let's repeat it here, but then let's like do like a, a note up or something. <laughs> So there's actually a host of uh, pretty good built-in effects and stuff like we have filters. So here let's for example put in a high pass filter to cut out some of the lows in that sound. Okay, so this is like super powerful because we're sketching out this idea very quickly. And okay, so this is the demo version. I can save the project, but I can't actually export the wave. I'm gonna most likely buy this because it's actually, I think, such a cool workflow tool for sketching out these kind of grooves and ideas really quickly. Um, specifically, like say for example, if you're on a laptop or something and you don't have like a really intense music setup and you just wanna kind of type in ideas with a keyboard, just getting this workflow waxed can get you down some really quick, some really good ideas really quickly. Okay, so let's start incorporating a uh, VST. So I wanna throw in something like Phase Plant because the combination of the really advanced, the combination of something like the really advanced Phase Plant plugin alongside this simple like note interface, uh, I think is a really powerful combination. So here, let's select one of the open slots on the right-hand side over here. Let's select plugin, and we can go over here and actually just load the, uh, the plugin that we desire. So let's load in phase plant. And I wanna create like a subby hit. So let's just go like this, put in a sign, and we were in G sharp. That was the note of that kind of house chord that we put in. And that is up by eight semitones. So we can actually just detune it here just to make it easier, we can punch in the C when we're actually playing the notes in. And so here then let's detune this a little bit. 
Okay, that's sounding good so far. Let's just adjust the envelopes a little bit. It will give it a bit of punch in the beginning by assigning this to the frequency. Maybe we want, we want to do it by exactly an octave. Then maybe we can put a bit of distortion here. And what we want to do is we actually want to use a curve modulator or the curve output, excuse me. And we want to use this to almost EQ the kind of boominess out of the sound. So let's say, for example, you can hear that there's a pitch sweep. And at one point, it's kind of a bit woof. So we want to find where that sweep, where that part of the sweep is and just remove some of the volume using an amplitude decay. Can you hear that? So much cleaner already. Okay, cool. Let's put in some subby hits. Uh, so let's go over to our edit window. I think here we want like the dum 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 on the same progression as this. Dum dum dum. So what we want to do is we want to actually trigger the sustain on and off by putting in note offs like this. And then in phase plant, we actually want to adjust for the sustain parameter of the sound. We actually want to, in fact, set this to sustain mode, right? And then this will be when the note is released, where it will kind of sweep from. And so as long as the note is being held down, it's going to loop this part of the cycle. Does that make sense? So we can actually throw in some other samples here. Uh, this one is pretty cool, also G sharp. We can pop this here and then maybe throw in a stab here on this channel as well. Okay, so how do we create a song structure? We would, for example, let's say we want to create like a fill of this. Let's duplicate this pattern like this. And now we have two patterns. And now it's going to progress through the track this way. So here, for example, if we want to loop this pattern to here while we're editing on it, we want to click this little gray icon over here. Now it's going to loop this pattern while we edit it. So one thing I like to do is like, for example, just select like the first six steps and then duplicate those uh, like control P for example. And now we're creating like a fill on that sound. And now here we can say, let's remove these and then just have and so we can duplicate it twice. And now we have four where the, th the fourth one is that fill. 
And so then we can unloop it and play from the beginning by clicking the button over here. Okay, so yeah, let's make an intro. Uh, let's say, for example, take this first thing here. We can duplicate it, and now the first one is a copy, and we can go in here and edit the first one. So here we can actually open up this menu, and we can, for example, mute some of the parts. So the drum beats. Let's say, for example, mute this and the break as well. Mute. Okay, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, but we want to mute the bass as well, and play, may perhaps just play that in the last part of the intro. So then let's say duplicate this part or clone it and then we can unmute this. And so now it's going to intro two bars, four bars, the fourth one is a break and then we can do the intro again. So here we can select this, duplicate it and then drag this down like this to the end and then we can duplicate it again. Uh, let's select it, duplicate it, unmute, and then we can go back here. You can actually uh, down and add a new part. And I believe we can choose the number here. So now we can actually go back and play part two again. Add a new part. Part three again. Part four again. And then part five. And we can duplicate and then play part zero again. So now we've basically created the whole song structure out of just that simple loop that we created in the beginning. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you want more Renoise tutorials on my channel, let me know as well. If you want, you know, different types of tracker stuff and more of this uh, old school explorations, also let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.